governments shape the future of communities by defining development strategies for nations and regions. These governmental plans and programs, policies and legislation will establish the basis for future decisions on projects in such diverse fields as agriculture, energy, industry, transport, regional development, land use, waste management or water management. Take as an example a national energy plan. It sets out how a country plans to generate and distribute energy. Once a plan or program is adopted, it defines what type of energy will be produced for years to come and directs investment decisions for construction, expansion or demolition projects. To develop such forward-looking and long-term plans and programs, decision-makers consider multiple factors such as access to resources, energy demand, existing infrastructure and so on. Because plans and programs have such a big influence on future decisions that affect people's lives, it is crucial that environmental and health impacts are among the decision-making factors. To ensure this, many countries apply a regulatory planning tool called Strategic Environmental Assessment, or in short, SEA. Compared to Environmental Impact Assessment, which applies to individual projects, SEA intervenes much earlier in the decision-making and targets government plans and programs as well as policies and legislation. The Protocol on Strategic Environmental Assessment is an international agreement under the auspices of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe and provides a legal framework for SEA procedures across countries that have joined the agreement. It was negotiated in 2003 to complement the Convention on Environmental Impact Assessment in a transboundary context, also called the ESPO Convention. The protocol is in force since 2010 and is open to all member states of the United Nations. It is similar to the European Union's directive on SEA. SEA is a step-by-step -step procedure that analyzes and communicates environmental and health considerations related to different planning options. These considerations are collected in consultation with relevant authorities and the public so that decision makers can compare all the pros and cons of each planning option. SEA intervenes early enough in the decision-making to prevent irreversible effects and costly mistakes due to bad planning. SEA also improves transparency and public trust in decision-making. It helps countries to promote economic development and at the same time to pursue green economy targets and environmental objectives such as protecting biodiversity, increasing energy efficiency and mitigating or adapting to climate change. Preparing a plan or program follows a number of steps that have logical links with the SEA procedure. Therefore, it's more effective to integrate SEA into planning instead of doing first one and then the other. This saves time and keeps additional costs for the planning procedure modest. Any cost or delay that might arise from the SEA is easily outweighed by the benefits. SEA starts with screening. This determines if SEA is actually needed. The protocol on SEA provides the criteria for this. If the answer is yes, the next step is called scoping. This defines the issues addressed in the assessment. Establishing a clear scope early on focuses the work on what is actually needed and helps use resources effectively. With this information at hand, experts then analyze the plan or program for its potential environmental and health effects. These results are described in detail and used to develop reduction measures and alternative planning options that lower the negative impacts. All findings must be documented and presented in an environmental report. The protocol on SEA specifies the required contents for the report. Those authorities that have to decide on the adoption of a plan or program, say in the Ministry of Energy, now have valuable information to help them consider environmental and health effects so they can take the best decision for their community. However, before any decision is taken, the environmental and health authorities must be consulted on the findings of the environmental report and the concerned public must be invited to express its opinions. Also, neighboring countries have to be able to share their concerns in cases where transboundary impacts are expected. Such consultations are crucial in SEA and applied throughout the process to produce results that are as transparent and comprehensive as possible.
The consultation results are not binding, but decision makers have to take into account all opinions before taking a final decision. They must also inform the environmental and health authorities and the public of the final decision taken. Once a decision is taken, it is obligatory to monitor the impacts of the adopted plan or program and to make the results publicly available. Integrating environmental and health concerns into development planning is essential for building a green economy. Therefore, a solid national SEA system is vital for countries that want to achieve sustainability and green growth. The protocol on SEA provides a legal and procedural framework for such an SEA system and valuable assistance for its effective implementation.